யானம் உரே யாவரும் கேடீர் செம்மொழி வலையொலி யூடியூப் சேனல் இந்த சேனலின் மூலமாக இந்த வலையொலியின் மூலமாக பல்வேறு தகவல்களை தினந்தோறும் நாங்கள் வழங்கி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த நிலையில் முழுமையாக கண்டு பார்க்கலாம் The title of this paper is Adiyarkan Allar, Commentator as Artist. A few poems on the commentary of Salapadiharam are still extant and they are full of complimentary references to Adiyarkan Allar. He is uh, said to have distributed the food of the gods in the form of a commentary in which the poem and its meaning fit in like the eagle and its shadow. By his commentary, he has made the threefold Tamil epic of the Chera Prince known to everyone. He is called Karum Tharuvum Anayan, generous as the cloud and the divine tree, and Nirambayar Kavalan, the ruler of Nirambai. that he was patronized by one poppanna kangeyar kon is evident from one of the poems which states that it was the pride caused by the food that was provided by the particular philanthropist that made possible the commentary on the threefold tamil work we learn that this poppanna kangeyar kon was the minister and chief of the army of king vishnu vartana who was persuaded by ramanuja to become a vaishnavite lord shiva is called adiyark nallar by tirunyana sambandhar in one of his tevaram poems not all scholars accept that the commentator was born in nerambai or was a contemporary of Kangeyar Kon, who lived in the 12th century. According to Muthu Thambi Pillai, he served as a minister of the king of Yedam of the 14th century called Kunapusana Singai Arya Chakravarti. There is another claim based on a Kanji from stone inscription that he belonged to Tenur, which was part of Palhundra Kottu Chingamburudha Valanadu. But for Adiyarkin Allah's interpretation, we would have missed much of the grandeur of Salapadi Haram, a world-class epic, unique in certain respects, extremely well-versed in all the three kinds of Tamil, Iyal, prose and poetry, Isai, music, and Nadagam, drama, and in all the major arts, such as painting sculpture and architecture adiyark nallar waving the magic wand of his erudition could reveal the hidden treasures of the ancient tamils unlike other commentators he mentions the names of the authors of the passages he cites since many of the ancient writings on music and drama had perished by his time for the sections on music and drama in selapadigaram he has as his authorities isai nunukkam indragaliyam panjava marabu parada senabadiyam and madivanar nadaga tamil nool of the various types of mudal karu and uri of the five major thinais he can give elaborate explanations with the suitable illustrative examples from selapadigaram itself using his commentary as the source a lot of valuable research could be undertaken in the field of ancient tamil music 
and monumental works such as Abhiraham Pandita's Karunamrita Sagaram and Vibhulananda's Yalnul could come into being. Unfortunately, we have used the commentary only up to Ursul Vari and even there what he wrote on the pivotal part called Karnal Vari is missing. No one knows how the rest sank into oblivion. Besides providing meanings of obscure words, explanations of complete segments, critical appreciations, parallel passages and subtle grammatical points, the commentator identifies for the benefit of readers figures of speech, manifest emotions, maipadu, proverbs and folk sayings and words from alien sources. He shows where a sentence begins and where it ends and at the end of every kadai he points out what kind of poem it is by drawing the reader's attention to its salient features. Like any modern critic of contemporary novels and dramas, Adyar Kinnallar is profoundly concerned with the specific time when an action takes place. Having been guided by the author's statements like Sittirai Chittirai Thingal Serndana, Adi Thingal Perurul Pakkat Adal Ser Kuttat Attaminyanru Velli Varathu on the day in Sittirai, when the moon drew near the star Sittirai, in the month of Adi, the eighth day after the full moon rose on a Friday, which occur in Indira Viravuraditha Kadai and Katurai Kadai, the commentator is able to reckon the days and weeks of particular happenings and tell us when Kovalan and Kannagi left Kaveri Pumbatinam and when they did what till they reached Madurai. After explaining the passage in Nadghan Kadai, Van Khan Vidya Vaigarai Yamat, Meen Tihar Visimbin Venmadi Ninga, Kargirul Nindra Kadainal Kangul. In the last watch of the night before daybreak, when the eye of heaven had not opened, the pale moon had vanished from the sky, incandescent with the stars. Adiyar Kinnallar details the events that took place during the period. Yid Thingal Irubathiyattil Sittarayim Pooranayim Koodiyya Sanivarathil Koodiyetri Nalel Nalinum Enbadanan Irubathiyattu Nalum Vila Nadandu Kodi Irakki Vaihasi Irubathi Ettinil Poorva Pakkathin Padinmoonraam Pakkamum Soma Varamum Petra Anudathil Nadkadaladi Oodudalin Vaihasi Irubathi Onebadil Shavvai Kedamayim Kedtayim Petra Nasa Yohath Niraimadhi Padinalaam Pakkath Vaiharai Pudhi Nidath Nilavupatta Andharath Irulilay Enravaru அது பூர்வ பக்கம் என்பது தோன்ற காரிருள் நின்ற கடைநாட் கங்குள் என்றார் ஒயில் எக்ஸ்பிளைனிங் வேனில் வீற்றிருந்த வேய்கரி காணத்து ஹி ஸ்டேட்ஸ் தட் இட் வாஸ் த லாஸ்ட் டே ஆஃப் த மந்த் ஆஃப் ஆணி ஆணி திங்கள் கடைநாள் ஆகலின் வீற்றிருந்த என்றார் இன்டர்பிரட்டிங் த பேசேஜ் குடகாற்று எரிந்து கொடி நுடங்கு மருகில் He adds that the author mentions the western wind just to indicate that it is the month of Adi. Adi Thingal Enbudu Thonra Kudakatru Kurinar. Since Madurai was burnt on a Friday of the month of Adi, all the previous occurrences are accordingly dated. On the line, Thannarum Mullayim. Thalneer Kuvalayim, a telling comment is made. Kaarai Yedirbaruva Mahalin Mullai Kurinar. 
because the winter season is to come there is the mention of mullai wherever necessary adiyarkunallar identifies the places to vachira nadu in indra vilavur edutha kadai is explained as sonai karai since the place was on the bank of the river called sonai in kadhan kadai the two lines kandan palli kadavularkellam andil arangath agan poril to all the city ascetics in the temple of the nirgrantha in the vast grove near arangam are interpreted and the place arangam is identified as tiruvarangam adiyarkunallar can bring out the hidden beauties and the suggestive richness of several passages in the epic which is well structured and remarkably textured elango's architectonic skill is evident throughout but the commentator sees to it that no subtle point of ascetic charm is missed by the reader in urhan kadi kovalan leaves kannagi with madari and goes into the city apparently with the intention of meeting the businessman there and securing a house for their stay but he saunters by being impressed with the long broad streets and the wide range of activities going on in the city and then returns to his place without accomplishing anything the poet says kavalan perur khand magilu eedi kovalan payandanan kodimadil puratten he saw the pandians a great city of madurai and rejoiced in his heart later he emerged from among the vines since the reader may be puzzled as to why there is no explicit mention of the outcome of kovalan's mission the commentator takes it upon himself to explain what really happened ivatin pandar nilalile thirindu kavalanadu periya nagarinai kandu magichi eidalale purunduli marandu pondan enga since he was delighted at the sight of the king's big city he went back forgetting to arrange for any accommodation in kolaikala kadai the goldsmith hatching a plot to trap kovalan brings the king's men to the place where he has been waiting giving them the impression that the anklet had been stolen from the king's palace by kovalan on seeing him they refused to believe that he could be a thief then the goldsmith in a 45 line haran tries to persuade them that the stranger has stolen the queen's anklet all this is reported by the poet tersley seivinai chelambin seidiyallam poivinai kollan purindudan kaatta the scheming goldsmith showed them the finer points of the anklets workmanship again any reader may wonder why kovalan was a mute witness to what was happening and why he did not attempt to defend himself against the false charges leveled by the goldsmith it is the commentator who clarifies what really happened during the tragic development of events selambin arumayellam kuruvan pole poimayai tholilaga udaya kollan avarai veraga alaithu koyilil aranmanayil irukindra thanichilambode porunda solli kaata purindu enave kovalanidam irundu neengi enbadum udan kaata enave achilambodu oru thanmayaga oppu oppu kuri enbadum kollapattana the goldsmith had a discussion with the group keeping kovalan at a distance under the pretext 
that he was telling them about the splendor of the anklet. And the commentator states that this could be inferred from the hints dropped by the poet's words Purindu and Udankata. In Puranjeri Irutta Kadai, we are told Pulavar Navil Purundiya Tendralodu Pal Nila Vengadir Pavai Mel Soriya Venil Tingalum Vendudi Andre Parmahal Ayavirth Adangiya Pinner. Born in the Malaya hills, nourished in Madurai, and familiar to the tongues of poets, the south wind blew over you as the moon bathed you in its milk white rays. The commentator ventures to interpret the lines in the following words Ittunayim, Yuval, Kannagi, Punarchi in Bam Perami Noki, Parmahal, Irangi Kurinal. Yenai Punarchi Ladavari Yenin, Madaviodu Pulandu Podalanum, Madraiki Cheraku Urupatan Enginan Adalanum, Mayor Kavundi Adhildan Seralanum, Yandum Mayural Matiramaladi, Punarchi Ilena Unarhe. Mother Yet uttered all these in expression of her sympathy for Kanahi because. She had not had the pleasure of intercourse. How is it that there was no intercourse since he had left Madhavi in a half and had a single minded desire to reach Madurai and they were joined by Kavundi Adihal? On the way, there could be only physical togetherness but no union. This delicate subject is discussed by the commentator. In another context, too, while interpreting the line Sengan Shivappa Arizal in Tunba Malai, Adiyarkanallar observes Hand Indra Vedavur Aditta Kadil, Kandahi Karunganum, Yendri Avar Yind Sengan Yendrar, Kale Hill, Thalai Adiyal Peranda Sevi Tondra. Earlier, the poet mentioned Kandahi's black eyes. But here he describes them as red eyes in order to indicate that the redness has been caused by the union with her husband in the morning. <coughs>